right, let's take a look at how we use arrays as function arguments and parameters. Right, so parameter list notation for an array, right? We know that when we create a function, right, the general form of the function heading is a return data type, name of the function, and then in the parameter list, right? In this case, we're going to have an array in our parameter list. So whenever we use an array name as a parameter, we use empty bracket notation. So the same way that we declare other parameters, each parameter has to have a data type. In this case, our array is an array of doubles, right? So our data type is double. Our parameter name here, I just called it A. What lets the function know that this is an array and not just a single double that we're talking about is this empty bracket notation. So we do not specify the size in the function heading, right? No size, empty bracket notation. And then we also pass another parameter to the function to let the function know what the size of the array is. Now it doesn't have to be called size. Often it's called length. A lot of times people just abbreviate it as n, right? Remember then, an array always has a finite number of elements, they're whole number elements, so they're always, normally your size is going to be type int, right? So in this particular case, this is a function prototype for a function named print array. It doesn't return anything. It gets access to an array uh, named A of type double, and the size of the array is this particular parameter int size, right? I know it's a prototype because it ends with a semicolon. Array parameters are going to act like call by reference parameters, meaning when we refer to the name of the array, right, when we pass that array to it, we're not going to pass the whole, all the values in the array. We're actually going to pass the array's address to that. All right, so I've got an example here where I'm actually then creating a function called fill array that we're going to use to um, go ahead and fill an array with random values. So let's just go ahead and write that code. So here in Visual Studio, right, I've already started main. Here in main, right, I've created a constant named array size that's five. I've created an array of type int. I named it here in main. It's called my array, and the array size, right, is five elements. I'm going to write then the function up here called fill array. What I've done is I've already filled in some comments. My description is it fills an array with random values. My precondition is that A is an integer array and size is the array length. Well, precondition and postcondition usually refers to parameters. So if I'm going to actually fill this array, I'm not going to return anything. So my return type is going to be called void. I'm going to just call it fill array. And then it's going to need access to an array, and it's going to need the size of the array. So since here in main, I'm working with an integer array, I want my type here to be int. I'm going to call it a, empty bracket notation. Now, you don't have to call it a. You can call it anything you'd like. You can actually, in C++, you want to avoid the name array because you know, there's something in the standard library that works with that, a lot of people will say ARR for me. I'm just going to make it A. Call it whatever you like. So that's why I'm saying here, precondition for my parameters, A is an integer array. Kind of obvious in terms of if you know how to program, right, you know that this is array notation. A then is the name we're going to refer to the array, and it must be of type in. The next parameter we need is size. And this precondition says that size is the array length, so data type is int. But the name of my parameter is size. Right, in here, then, right, I'm going to fill the array with random numbers. And my post condition says that elements in the range 0 to size minus 1, so I'm going to fill the entire array with random values or overwritten with random values. You can simply do that with a for loop. We've seen that in the previous example for it i equals zero so remember our first array element always starts at index zero i less than size our last array element is always size minus one plus plus i and now i'm just going to say a at index i i'm going to call the rand function i'm not worried about seeding or anything uh rand is defined here in the standard library so i've included that there 
Right now I've got IO stream in this example. I'm not doing anything with it yet, but we will be in just a bit. All right, so now let's just go ahead and compile. See if we've got any errors. Uh, no errors, I've got a warning here. My array is an unreferenced local variable. All right, that's referring to here in main. I've declared this array, but I've not done anything with it. All right, we don't want things in our program. We're not using, they take up memory. All right, in this case now that we've written our function fill array, I'd like to call the function. All right, so here, all right, we've declared our array. I'm gonna call it fill array. So call function fill array. All right, so when we call a function, we call it by name. Fill array. And this particular function right, requires two parameters. It requires the name of an array. So here in main, the name of my array is called my array. And then the size here in main, well, I've got this constant array size to pass to the size parameter. All right. So there's remember there's a one-to-one -one correspondence that when what's ever in this parameter is going to get passed here whatever's in this parameter gets passed here. In the case of an array, then the name of the array is an address to memory. That address will get passed here. This function then has access to this memory back in main. So we're going to see that when this stores information in this array A, it's going to affect the memory back here in main, that this will be changed. And so let's just go ahead and you know, run the cursor at this rebuild. All right, so I've run all the code here in main, right? It created then this constant array size. It created my array. Notice it's filled with garbage because I haven't initialized it to anything. And now let's step into this function, which is F11. So step into, right, when we're about to call a function, that means right, if I pick step over, it would run all the code in the function. I want to step into and see it run the code line by line. So step into, right, we're up here into our function. So now what's local to this function? Well, notice A actually got an address here. This was the same as the address back in main of my array. Right, if we open this up, right, we don't see all of those elements in here. When we're in a function, and since we typically got what you know as a reference, what I know as a pointer, right, a reference back to this memory location, all we have here is this memory location, and then this one particular value. So this one particular value is typically what's stored in A at index zero. You can see in this function, the parameter size got a copy of the value five, Right, so down here in main, when we call this, this was a pass by value. So the integer value that was stored here was passed to the integer here. So now here, if I say F10, right, we come down here to run this line of code. So what it's going to do is it's going to assign zero to I. Remember in a for loop, this first action happens once and only once. So it's going to initialize I to zero. The next action will be to run this test. Is I less than size? So will zero be less than the size five? Yes, it will. When that's true, we'll come down here. So F10, I, you can see we're ready to run this line of code. So A at index I will be A at index zero. And if I actually want to put something in my watch list, if I say A at index zero, and if I say A at index one, and A at index two. So I can watch the entire list here if I want. All right, so now I'm gonna hit F10. We're going to see then we got that value of 41. I've not seen to my random number generator. If you're watching these lectures in a row, you'll see that my system right now is always giving me a value of 41 for the first one. That might look familiar. And so I'm going to hit F10 right now. Remember, after this is the one line of code associated with the body of the for loop when this finishes. The next thing that's going to happen is it's going to increment i by one. It's going to compare as long as i less than size is true. So as long as one is less than five is true, it'll come back down and run this next line of code. So that was true. 
and two gets its information stored. Notice, see, one of the things I don't like is we can't see that here. But over in the watch window, we can see that happening there. Uh, hit F10 again, we'll go through and index two because I became two. Get some information stored. We go back here. And notice in this autos window, this is your auto storage class. That same information is sitting here as what's sitting in your locals. So I is three. If we were to add to the watch window here, and actually I wonder if we can just add. Oh, this is going to search. It must be a handy way to add an array rather than do this element by element. I need to check that out. All right, our array has four elements. Well, let's go back here, not in here. I'll hit F10 to execute this line of code. Notice that gets filled. All right. I will increment by one. We'll fill the next one. When I increments to five, if we pop back over here, we can see I is five. That failed the test. Five is less than five, so it goes beyond the body of the loop. The next line of code says, okay, I'm going to exit this function. So F10, you can see now we return back to main. Now that we're back in main, if we look at my array in main, you can see that that area of memory got overwritten by the same values. So whenever we pass arrays as parameters, we have access to that memory outside that function, right? We're accessing memory outside here. So notice this has the address of 001BFD08. All right, that address actually got passed up to fill array. All right, so that's the important thing about arrays right? is you do have there. Think of them. Uh, we've not worked really with call by reference. We talked about it in a previous lecture. You do have access to memory outside there. An array is not a pass by value. It's a pass by reference. So let's go back now. Right. And so we got that working. So the next thing we might want to do is we might want to print out what's in the array. Right. Fill array, we definitely want to overwrite the memory. But sometimes if we only want to read from an array, we can add a const modifier to the name of the array, which makes it read only. So the keyword const in the parameter list, down here, let's look at the parameter list. So here's our array, type int. We know it's an array, empty bracket notation tells the function this is an array. If we add the word const here, that makes that read only. And then in this particular case, this function is just going to print out what's inside the array. So let's take a look at that. All right. Um, so let's write that function. All right. Our description is prints array data, one value per line. Maybe my precondition is A is the is an array filled with data. Right. If they're passing us garbage, we're just going to print out garbage. Size is the array length. Right. Post condition. Right. We're going to say A is read only. No changes. Are made to the data. Right. And so these, these comments that we're typing, right, if you're an experienced programmer, you already understand that. You should be typing and writing these comments that will likely be required in your homework in my course simply because it makes you think about what's going on. Is that in the real world and production code, people are likely not going to be writing this type of comment because an experienced programmer will know that this is an array and they'll know if the word constant there it makes it read only but writing this helps you to understand what's going on all right so our function is going to print out what's in the array it's not going to return any information so the return type is void print array 
is going to need access to the array. So constant int a empty bracket notation says array. Remember the size is always an integer type. Very simply, you're going to see now four loops are handy. We could do this with a while, but for i equals zero, i less than size. With arrays, when we access all of the array elements, this pattern is going to look very familiar. You're going to do the same thing over and over. Right? Um, one statement in the body of the loop, I don't need curly brackets. could put them in to make it clear, but I'm just going to print out what's a and index i. So we said we're going to print one element on a line. That's all this function is supposed to do. Right. And then let's call the function. So after we fill it, we're going to call our function print array. Notice once again, when we call the function, so in the argument list, so when we call the function, we call these arguments in this list. Arguments get passed to parameters, lots of vocabulary. We use the name of our array here in main. Here in main, our array is called my array. The array size. I'm going to pass it that. All right, so I'm going to do right click, run to cursor, we'll let it rebuild. Good, no build error. So, right, we've run all the code prior to this step, so we can see our array has been filled with these values. So now, if we go into print array, or if I just actually hit F10, F10 then said step over, which meant it ran all the code in that function, and you can see. It went through and printed these out one per line. Right, that's what we expected it to do. Right. Now, let's test that this const works. What if I accidentally put in some code down here that said, actually, put curly brackets in here. Let's say I did something for, OK. Some silly reason, I'm just going to set everything to zero. Notice this is underlined right now. It's telling me, then the tele IntelliSense is telling me that A is read, or sorry, expression must be a modifiable L value. So down here, it's right. let's just go ahead and compile so we can see the compilation error. Expression must be a modifiable at L value, right? Which is coming to this line. So L value means left value. So it means on the left, this must be modifiable, meaning we can write over it. A, you cannot assign to a variable that is const. That makes a little more sense to us. So by putting this const declaration in here, the compiler keeps us from doing something like accidentally overriding memory. Right. We want to let people who use our functions know whether or not, especially when things are passed by reference, we need to let them know whether or not we're going to change the contents of memory. Right. Up here, with fill array, we change the contents of memory, and we let the user of our program know by putting this information in and this post condition that we were overriding the values. Here, when we say it's read-only, we're guaranteeing that we're not making changes to the data. If we were to get rid of this const modifier, Right, and I were to now compile this, I'm not going to get a compilation error. And what would happen is we would accidentally overwrite the data in the file. Now, this is kind of obvious. We might be doing things maybe with math where we should only be reading the data and temporarily doing some, some, uh, some work not, so we should not be destroying what's out in memory. There are scenarios where we could accidentally do that. So when something should be read-only, right, when your function should not be making changes to it, make sure you use the const parameter here. That const parameter says that this area of memory is read-only. Right? We can read from it, we can't write to it. So this is our correct finished version. Right? Once again, when you write a function, Array notation in the parameter list, data type, name of the array, empty bracket notation says what the array name, or tells the function this is an array. But when we actually call the function, so notice when we call the function, we don't use brackets. All we do is give the name of the array. No brackets when we use the name of an array as an argument. All right, so I think that about covers everything. Uh, one other thing, 
notice here I was just always putting the array name first. Uh, I could change the order of that. I, we could get the size first and then the parameter second. So if I were to rebuild that, oh, if I were to rebuild that, now it's complaining about my call because since the order changed here, right, I need to make sure that I call that with the correct order. Let me build that to show you that those errors go away. All right, so order is important. Like I said, you don't have to put the array name first. You can put the size. Uh, typically, examples I've seen, the array names come first, followed by the size. What you want to do is you want to be consistent from function to function. Right? I wouldn't want to put one order here and the next order there. It makes it hard for other people using my libraries, including myself, to, to uh, know what the order is, right? When I keep changing it, and it would make things more error prone. All right, all right. So that was it. Then that's it for uh, everything. We pretty much you need to know about the syntax of single dimensional arrays. The next lecture will be on multi-dimensional arrays.